Good morning, guys. It is currently 3.30 in the morning. Not a soul in sight. I'm trying my best to sound bright-eyed and bushy-tailed for the camera, but I've really only got about two hours of sleep. But anyway, I'm loaded up in the truck, and I am headed down to Alabama. I'm going to take you guys along for a little bit of a vlog, but anyway, we're heading down there to pick up Nick. She's been in Alabama for a month now. Um, buddy Isaiah Dozer has been. Uh, he's had her down there, and he's been hunting her for me for about a month, putting her in the woods, uh, getting some time in with her, and working on a couple things. Um, not to say we had a whole lot of improvement, but we definitely got some more information before she went. But I'll talk a little bit more about that in a little while. Uh, until then, we're actually going to head down the road here. i got to get some fuel. i got to get something to wake up with some caffeine, and uh, we'll see you guys on the road. there i'm running uh running a little ahead of schedule so isaiah says he's gonna be about another 20 minutes I'm supposed to meet him over here at the bass pro um just west of birmingham i think it's lead alabama or lead, something alabama i can't remember but anyway there's a uh, bucky's gas station here and my buddy brent was telling me that you do not pass a bucky's that you don't go visit it i've never been to a bucky's i don't know what they're about Except for it looks like the Walmart of gas stores from what I'm looking at. So I'm gonna go over here, top off the fuel tank, because I got some time to kill and check out this Bucky's. guys well i have to say brent was right about bucky's you pass you come by a bucky's you stop at a bucky's i have never seen in my life a gas store like this i mean they had everything from hunting supplies to i mean <laughs> grills they were selling whole grills of course everything a gas store has times 20 they had like a restaurant in there that place was crazy of course i got luca toy got uh kate my wife a, a little shirt because i get a shirt everywhere i go and i got little nick some uh, dog treats has some dog treats there so i'm pulling in over here to bass pro right now and uh i think isaiah's already over here so we're gonna do a little interview with him let him recap what has happened with nick over the course of the last month that he's had her so we'll get to it hey guys this is isaiah dozer he's from uh where town are you from from alabama i'm from nauvoo nauvoo alabama nauvoo alabama i've asked him that four times and i keep forgetting i apologize <laughs> Yeah, we're about. I'm about 40 miles north of Birmingham. Okay, so I'll, I'll put his address out there. So if y'all want to come knock yeah. on his door and talk yeah, to him, yeah, that's just fine. <laughs> anyway, he's had Nick's now for about a month, and uh, he's been hunting her good and hard for me. She's come back good and healthy. I'm very happy with the way he's took care of things. Over the course of the last month, you've had her in the woods. What did you see out of her from when you got her to now? Did she improve? Did she go downhill hunting wise? What did you see? Be honest. You know when i come and picked her up from you and when i first got her on the leash i told you that what i noticed was that she seemed like she had a lot of play in her a lot of pup still in her right and uh i took her out there the night after i took the day i got her to get to know her and her to get to know me and everything mm -hmm. and i've noticed if a dog don't know you sometimes sometimes they won't hunt good for you right well i got to know her a little bit and then the next day i walked her around and it was a sunday evening and i took her hunting that night and uh, she went out and she 
she struck on a creek there and just went a little bit. I told my buddy, I said, well, I don't know if, if she's gonna go much deeper tonight. I said, she don't know me that good yet. Right. And I got to know her and she got to know me and man, she's got heart and drive like some of the best ones I've ever walked in the woods with. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, me and you talked about, we thought she might've been running tracks backwards. Yeah, we was worried about that. And he, he had her run several tracks and just not finish them out. So we didn't know if she was wasn't training or if she was going backwards. And uh, and we went and I, I went down to one of our one of my buddies Michael's, and we took his older dog, uh, and uh, she did she got treed, and then she left a tree, mm -hmm. and then she got treed again with Michael's dog, and as we was going in, you know she I told you she left a tree, but she was walking back and forth treeing, and then the third tree Michael's dog made, she come in there and treed it, but she was working the track and. The way Michael's dog did, he he cut in there half heart, half half tracked it and mm -hmm. cut in there on it and treed it before she got there. But he was treed a mi two minutes and she come in there on it. Yeah. And uh, I believe that one had the meat. Oh yeah, that, that was a cunning tree. Okay. Yeah, we we had eyes. Good. But uh, that dog's got a lot of heart. She's got yeah. a lot of want to, and she's got a motor on her when she wants to. And you took her out two nights ago, and that was the last time you hunted her. Yeah, I took her and out two, two tell nights Tell everybody ago. kind of a recap real quick of what happened on that one. Okay. Because we was worried about the backtracking thing. We think we got that part yeah. figured out. Yeah, we was, I was worried. Me and him had talked uh, many times about it. We thought she might have been backtracking. And uh, me and my buddy got a new property that I don't believe there's been a coon dog on it in 20 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, of course, you know. Got a deer feeder and coons are all over it. And need them took care of. You can hunt till deer season gets here. Okay, well we go down there and we go to the feeder and we cut loose and she's milling around a little bit and then all of a sudden just gone. Okay. Like she normally does and boom, she fires up out there. Just and she's open. always solo all month long. Oh yeah, solo. It doesn't matter if you had her with 20 dogs by herself, puppies, or the best coon dog in the world. She's She's got the mentality of I'm gonna do my thing. If you just happen to be there when I get there, that's just how it's gonna be. She's okay. she's she's what you would describe as a dead loner. Yeah. If okay. if she just when you get her home, you take her hunting, she goes to start clicking and treeing every t every time you cut her loose, she's gonna be a dead loner no matter what. Is what I would describe her as. Okay. But we cut her loose. She goes in there. She strikes. And she works across a ditch and then works up a, a muddy little swamp and comes out and works across a big field back into a creek and up the edge of the creek across onto a bush hog trail and working, working, working. And to make sure about the backtracking thing, I told the boy that was with me, I said, look, I want to stay about 100 yards from her. Mm -hmm because she would get to circling, circling, and she would locate and act like she was gonna load up, and she never would. And she started circling harder and harder and acting like she was fixing to locate. And she did locate a couple times. I said, hey, let's go in there. So she and gave you indications she wanted to tree? Yes, but yes, didn't. yes. She gave indications okay. she, that she wanted to tree, but she just, she, in my opinion, she wants to be, this dog wants to be active. Okay. But when if she's unsure, she's not gonna pull that trigger. Okay. Even if there's a pile of coons there, because that's what happened. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. When she was treeing real hard, uh, or not treeing real hard, when she was circling real hard, we went in there, and I was about 80 yards from where she was circling real hard, and then I heard her open again, and I pulled my dog trail out, and I looked, and she had moved, and I told the boy that was with me, I said, hey, let's walk over here. I want to look. And we got tree. over there and it was in a big hedgerow and the hedges was about 10 foot tall and there was a couple sweet gum trees coming out of it. Well, there's one bigger sweet gum tree had some vines all in it and I just happened to throw my light up and look. I seen a set of eyes. I said, is that a coon? And I turned my white light on and sure enough, there's a sow and two kittens sitting up there. Okay. And the only reason I believe she didn't tree them is because I believe they were layups and yeah. they'd been up there all day and she was just unsure it was still hot it was 10 30 at night and it was still almost 80 degrees with like 80 percent humidity it was it was hot and muggy so i guess what we can take from this is we feel like she's pretty hot nosed yes she's gonna be a dead loner yes and her confidence is super low if she don't 
110 percent think it's there even though it could be 90 percent there she's probably not gonna load up on as yeah. of right now as of right now yes i know me and you talked and uh, you said you talked to your buddy ken mm -hmm. and uh said uh, he's gonna hunt her a little bit for you yeah he might i'm gonna take her to the house and I'm, i got a couple leads on property i'm gonna try to work things out and if i can't he's gonna take her because he's got a couple properties okay but uh from what i'm seeing and hearing from you the main thing i want you to do is get her in the woods and give me some intel and he's definitely done that so now i can go on from here if you'd have took her and she'd uh, not run any tracks or been real trashy i'd probably send her down the road but the signs that i'm getting from you out of her i'll probably keep her at least through this coon season and just give her a chance hunt her hard and we'll oh, yeah we'll really look look at it after the first of the year i know like when you sent her down here you said y'all don't have armadillos up in your part of the world yeah and when i took her i had we uh <clears throat> We sent an armadillo run across a four-wheeler trail. Yeah. And there was a couple times she was running some tracks, and I just wondered if she might have been running trash. Mm -hmm. And I cut her loose, and she ran over there, and she did open on it. And I corrected her and got her back to me. Okay. And I turned her back loose, and she ran back over there, and she opened again. I bumped her again and toned her back to me. She come back to me. And that, that was a deer or was it an armadillo? That was an armadillo. Armadillo, okay. No, Do you have I, any issues with deer? No, I turned her loose looking okay. at a deer. She walked over there, looked, turned her head, turned her loose on top of a possum just to yeah. see. Yeah. Walked away from I've her. I've never had issue with her on possum. Now deer, when I took her to LBL with Kim uh, almost two years ago, you know, at first night, it was it was terrible on deer with her, but I, I, I worked on her and I hoped I got it broke, so it seems like yes. I did. In Alabama. Uh, our coon season starts September 1st and goes through uh, March 10th or 15th, I believe. That's on public land. That's and on everything. public land. And uh, private land in Alabama, all year long, you're, you're allowed right. to harvest coons. Gotcha. Okay. Well, Isaiah, I sure enough appreciate you doing this, man. I'm going to take her home and uh, I'll give her a little bit of break because I know you hunt her harder than oh, what yeah. she's used to, oh, which yeah. that's what we wanted. And uh, we're going to get back in the woods with her. So I appreciate it, buddy. Yes, sir. No problem. Thank you. Well, guys, there you have it. We got Nick's picked up. I got her in the back of the truck here. Nixie girl. How you doing, Nixie girl? Hey, good girl. Hey, good girl. So I got Nix riding in the back here on the Metal Arc dog seat cover. She looks like she loves it. Good and comfortable. So, all right, guys. We got a five-hour ride back to North Carolina, but I appreciate you hanging along with me. If something interesting happens, I'll bring you back. But uh, more than likely, I will catch you guys on another one. We love you. We appreciate you. Y'all treat one for